Uh, yeah, may, I think maybe... in Ultra, uh, <clears throat> the, the matchups aren't as... They're a lot more balanced than they were before. That's why it's probably not coming up. I mean, with delayed wake up, you know, the Vortex having been such a, you know, like characters that have a Vortex being really strong in all the Street Fighters up until Ultra, when they introduced delayed wake up, that changed a lot. So right. Vortex was not so strong anymore. Not, yeah. not such, a, such a dominating factor in the game anymore. Yeah, we'll see how that might affect uh, uh, Dudebag here in his match against Ryan already. Because Ken does has his own Vortex, right? Yeah, and his depends on a lot of soft knockdowns with uh, the way his combos work. He gets hard knockdowns off sweep links and uh, throws. And look at this strong start. He likes to keep the corner. I like that. Very smart. And then the late wake up uh, causing him not to get the meaty fireball he was going for. And I'm looking at, in the audience there, and all the Japanese players are watching this match. Oh, they seem very uh, enthralled. Yeah. I know uh, Kichijo Ken was playing uh, Dude Bag earlier, so you might have, have been impressed with the matches that they played. <laughs> this is so good. Like, I love to see, like, like Santaro, man, obviously main Saga, and he's watching Ryan Saga thinking, yeah. Uh, see what I can pick up from this way, what little tricks that Ryan might have that I can learn from. Right, uh, Ryan kind of got uh, got off a little easy there uh, after the uh, dude back jumped and could have punished him with a jump roundhouse, but didn't. But he managed to get another opportunity and finish the round. And now Ryan gets the life lead. Very well placed fireball to stop the tiger shot. Ryan a playing a lot more sort of reserved this, this round. Yeah, a little unusual for him. Yeah. I mean, he has to. I mean, he lost that first round pretty badly, so right. yeah, it's going to be. He tried to, you know, I guess what he did last round didn't work. He's trying something different this time. Oh, wow, that, that nice little punish. Jump. Wow, that was a good punish on the step kick. I like that. Ooh, no escape allowed. But when Ken decides that he wants to rush you down, there's very little that you can do, man. Honestly, especially when you're Saga with such a, a slow walk speed. And the such room explodes for Duhi taking that first game over Ryan Hart. So much support and passion from the guys here. So Ryan goes to uh, character select. Now I mean, I that match just looks difficult, man, in my opinion. Sagat versus Ken. I mean, yeah, I, I don't know, man. Just Sagat against a lot of the Shotos in general, I, th I think even against Ryu, the issue is for Sagat that once he gets inside a certain range, it's really hard for him to press any buttons, and uh, Ken rushes down probably the strongest out of, out of all the Shotos, so it becomes really difficult. Oh, what's happened to my chat, man? <laughs> this is frozen. Oh, yeah. See, I see Dudebag has created a lot of hype in the chat room as well. Ryan still taking his time to consider. Of course, Dudebag does have the option to change his Ultra. That's why he hasn't selected it yet. Dudebag uh, c equals Momochi confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they're saying. Well, okay. What you did turn up in the end. Ryan sticking with it. Sagat so Ultra 2. Okay. Well, maybe he's maybe he's realized something. Maybe he just took that time to think about a little something in the matchup. We'll Not see sure if he how manages. Ultra Two changes. Uh, he was he was playing the same Ultra still. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Sorry, I was switched it out. Okay, overhead trade. Oh, crouch fierce. Okay, that button didn't come out too often in the first match. Definitely crouch fierce. One of the buttons that Sagat needs to be using in this matchup because you can't just let Ken do his forward medium kick. You exactly. need something that will actually stop it from actually coming in because it gives Ken that, that close yeah. upper personal, you know. And Sagat has uh, crouch strong and uh, standing forward as well. Those are, those are decent yeah. buttons for stuffing approaches. Good punish. Excellent. Full raw ultra that's going to bring him down to within a throws range of death. Oh, he wanted that car throw. He took that step back, trying to uh, prep it, but it was a little bit too far. R Ryan is going to be buffering an ultra at this point, but is Dookie going to throw any fireballs? Give him the chance. I don't, he doesn't need to. He does not need to. Exactly. And that was the recognition on his end that he didn't need to. Just jump yeah. forward a little empty jump, put himself back in footsie range where Ken has complete dominance over Sagat. There's that standing forward. Ooh, cross up. Nice overhead, deep. All right, breaks the focus with that EX Tiger shot. Ryan finally in the lead. 
I think we had the similar situation the first match and Dookie came back. Like we were saying, once Ken decides he wants to get, get in, like what he's doing now, it's really hard for Sagat to do much about that. Right, and Dookie has picked a strong approach dizzy. angles, a stun! Literally five to 10 seconds. Ryan in a big spot of bother right now. Okay, but he's still potentially capable of, of taking this round. He's one combo, lost. one combo. Oh, good play by Ryan, well, no, he's not dead. Oh my god, he went for it, it's not Ryu! It's not Ryu, you don't go for a Kara uppercut to punish a sweep. Exactly, Ken sweep a lot do safer. A lot safer, exactly, we were just talking about that earlier. And oh no. Dude bag? That's bad news for so. Ryan, obviously not looking happy about, about that. No, uh, he'll take still the handshake. Though, and still shakes Ryan's hand. But uh, you know Ryan. I mean, uh, you you yeah. know him the best probably out of all of us. Yeah. You know how he's feeling right now at this very moment. Course, man, could have done a lot more. Uh, the call out by Dudebag. That that was that was just the nail in the coffin. That was yeah. that was just the seal on his dominance in the in that set. There's no masking that that was such a dominant win for him. But you know what? I still don't think that the Kara uppercut that Ryan went for there was actually a bad option. It wasn't a bad option because it was chip. It was chip they wanted to do, right? Yeah. And if you had you noticed if Ryan hadn't done the Kara uppercut, Dookie's dragon, he would have just gone up. If he just waited there, it would have just gone up. Right. So I it was literally he knew that Ryan would try and chip him out as fast as he possibly could. So Dookie